Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing schizophrenia and the antipsychotic drugs. Okay, so I apologise for the abrupt ending to the previous video. Okay, it means that this video is going to be extremely short now because I really do have very little left to say. Okay, so the only thing I now want to explain is why the atypical antipsychotics have fewer extra pyramidal side effects than the first generation antipsychotics. And the reason is, it, it's that these drugs, when you attach an antagonist onto a D2 receptor like so, okay, the drug does not remain there permanently, okay? Instead, what will be continuously happening is the drug will bind on, and then it will fall off, and then another drug molecule will come, bind on, fall off, okay? Now, in the case of the first generation antipsychotics, they bind D2 receptors and then remain bound for absolutely ages before falling off again. Whereas in the case of atypical antipsychotics, they bind to the D2 receptor and then move off much quicker, and then come back on much quicker, move off much quicker, come back on much quicker, go back off much quicker. Now, what's the significance? Well, basically, it means that if you give a first generation antipsychotic, you'll get the molecules binding to the D2 receptors, okay, and then when the nigrostriatal dopamine system releases dopamine into the chordate putamen, the receptors will have the antipsychotic molecule bound to them, and now the dopamine will be in the extracellular fluid, but it'll be waiting for some of these drug molecules to fall off, but they will take absolutely ages to fall off, and instead what might now happen is the dopamine might be removed from the extracellular fluid before the antipsychotic molecule has ever fallen off, and therefore the dopamine completely doesn't give any stimulation to the chordate putamen at all. Whereas in the case of the, anti sorry, the atypical antipsychotics, okay, the nigrostriatal pathway will release dopamine into the chordate putamen. The, initially, the antipsychotic molecules will be bound, and now the dopamine's in the extracellular fluid, but now the antipsychotic molecule will move off in a more normal time frame, okay, and now the dopamine molecule can replace it, okay, and therefore you will get some stimulation of the cells of the chordate putamen. So basically, the first generation antipsychotics, because they remain bound for so long before falling off, okay, um, they have this tendency to completely block all stimulation by the nigrostriatal pathway of the chordate putamen, whereas the atypical antipsychotics, they will still allow a little bit of stimulation of the chordate putamen because they move off in a more realistic time frame, basically, for dopamine being able to uh, produce some stimulation. Okay, and that's why they produce less severe extrapyramidal side effects. Okay, right. Uh, so that now concludes our discussion of schizophrenia and antipsychotic drugs.